tutorial, I'm going to show you a simple sketching technique. This will give you an overall idea how the sketching process works and different tools you can use. Hi, I'm Yasmin, founder of Jack Jewelry Academy and author of The Magic of Jewelry Illustration. Thank you for stopping by. I use white paper and an HP pencil for the first exercise. In my experience, it really helps if you draw a few guidelines first. They help you to build the outline. A cross-shaped guide, for example, makes it easier to lay out a square as it has a center point. By eye, I can estimate the distance between the center and each side of the square. I can first add marks to the guide and then draw each side of the square. The lines do not need to be perfect. Sketches generally look more alive if they are slightly uneven and not perfectly straight. This is the starting point to create a more intricate object. For example, we can make this a three-dimensional box. Extend these three points approximately in the same direction. And then close the surfaces. Due to the distortion, these two new surfaces will appear a bit smaller than the front surface. You can make the box transparent by creating the back and base surface. If we redraw the main outline of the box, the transparency will be less visible and the lines less confusing. Next, a cone. Also here, I create a guide first. I start with the base. It will appear oval due to the distortion. I create marks for the approximate outline of the oval. I freehand the oval. Then I mark the height and connect the sides. I redraw the outline to make the sketch look cleaner. Then a sphere. A sphere has a circular outline and circles are notoriously difficult to draw freehand. But a cross-shaped guide will also help us here. I mark the same distance in all four directions. I connect each point to the next by drawing a quarter circle. This is easier than trying to sketch the circle in one go. Last but not least, a cylinder. It's the same technique. The guide in this case consists of one vertical and two horizontal lines. I add the marks 
sketch the ovals and connect the sides. Now, use these basic shapes to draw more complex objects. Here are just a couple of examples. back to the basic objects. By adding quick shading, you can make the sketches look much nicer and more professional. This arrow indicates the light direction. This helps me to place the shading correctly. The box has three visible flat surfaces. Hence, I add shading opposite the light source. shows a curved surface. Here, the shading is on the left and right. cylinder is also curved. The top is flat. has shading all along the outline.
center, slightly towards the light source, remains without shading. Make sure the shading is even and shows no hard edges, but an even graduation from dark to light. In the description you can find a video that helps you with the shading process. If you would like to learn the rules of where to add shading and highlight in more detail, you can check out my first book, Jewelry Design Essentials. It also covers cast shadows in detail, which is what we will add next to the sketch to make it appear truly three-dimensional. Cast shadows can only be seen opposite the light source. They usually have a similar but distorted shape of the object that casts the shadow. Cast shadows can be quite complex. Their appearance depends on the object, the light direction and also the surface they are cast upon. The best way to learn more about cast shadows is to observe them in real life. different drawing tools for sketching, like ball pens, colored pencils, fine liners and so on. Also, use different colored paper. The effect of white pencil on dark paper can look stunning. <music> 